Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. Today we are continuing our series on the counties of Ireland, and today our focus turns to County Limerick of County Munster, of, of the province of Munster. Today's guest is Keen, and I would like to give him a very warm welcome to today's show. We have loads of shows planned for the upcoming weeks here on the Genealogy Radio Show, so there is plenty to look forward to. And I think we're in for a great show today and hopefully we will learn a lot more about the Treaty County. So Keen, to begin, can you tell me a little bit about County Limerick's geography? Limerick is located in the Midwest region of Ireland, as Nick said earlier, in the province of Munster. It is bordered by Clare to the north, by Cork to the south, by Tipperary to the east, and by Kerry to the west. Altogether, there are 14 baronies in Limerick. There is Clan William, which stretches from the River Shannon in Limerick City as far as to the villages of Balaniti, Cahar Conlish, and Castle Connell. It contains the commercial and economic heart of the county. It also contains Colbert Rail Station, the Limerick City and the Limerick City suburbs of Castle Troy, Anacotti, and Bally Simon. The second barony that we'll talk about is Canelo Lower, which stretches from the Shannon Estuary in Askeaton to as far south as Rathkeel. The third barony is Canelo Upper, which stretches from the very southwestern edges of Adair through the villages of Ballingarry, Drumcolliher, and Ballyagran. Next up, we have Coona in East Limerick, which stretches through the villages of Palace Green, Dune, and Oula. Next up, we have Kosh Lee, which comprises the Galti Mountains, the villages of Galbally, Ballylanders, Kilfinnan, and Gary Spillan, and straddles the borders with Cork and Tipperary. The, next, the sixth barony is Koshma, which comprises the popular town of Adair, the towns of Adair of Croom, Athlaca, Brough, and stretches all the way to the Cork border to Effin. The seventh barony is Glen Quinn in West Limerick. This comprises the towns of Newcastle West and Abbey Field. It straddles the borders of Cork and Kerry. The eighth barony is Kenry, which stretches from the Shannon Estuary to the edge of Adair, comprising the village of Palace Kenry and Currachase Forest Park. The next barony is the smallest barony, Kilmallock, which only comprises the town of Kilmallock in South County Limerick. The next barony is North Liberties, which comprises the northwestern section of Limerick City, comprising the suburbs of Cahardaven, Clareview, and Balananti. The next barony is Oney Beg, which comprises Kappa Moor and Maru. The twelfth barony is Pubble Brine, which comprises the Limerick City suburbs of Dura Doyle and Raheen, and the villages of Mungret, Clarina, Patrick's Well, and Krakora. The 13th barony is Shannad in West County Limerick. It straddles the border with Kerry and stretches from the port of Foynes down through the village of Shannad Golden and to the village of Athay. The 14th barony is Small County, which comprises the villages of Fedamore and Herbertstown. The longest river in Ireland, the River Shannon, straddles the border with County Clare, flows through Limerick City before turning into an estuary, flowing all the way into Kerry before reaching the Atlantic Ocean. The Golden Vale, which has the best land for dairy farming in all of Ireland, is in East County Limerick. The highest mountain in Limerick is Galty Moor at 918 metres above sea level. Galty Moor is shared between Limerick and Tipperary in the Galty Mountains. The Shannon Estuary has several tributaries, including the Maig and the Deal. The county town is Limerick City, which is the third largest city in the Republic of Ireland after Dublin and Cork. It is a population of 100,000 people. Famous sites include King John's Castle, the Milk Market, the Hunt Museum, St. John's Cathedral, which has the tallest church spire in Ireland, and the Treaty Stone. The, commercial, the main commercial street in Limerick is O'Connell Street, which has the luxury department store, Brown Thomas, as well as various other shops and restaurants. 
Limerick City is very famous for its rugby, with Thomond Park, where Munster play their home games, being located in the northwest of the city. Limerick GAA also play their home games in Limerick City in the Gaelic grounds. The main educational institutions, University of Limerick, Mary Immaculate College and Limerick Institute of Technology are also located in the city. Other towns include Newcastle West, Kilmallock, Adair, Croom and Castle Connell. And Keen, how has the population of Limerick been impacted throughout the years? And in particular, can you tell me how events such as the famine affected the population of that county? With the use of maps and population graphs on the Aero website, we can see how the population of Limerick has changed throughout the ages. In 1841, the population of the county was 329,730 people. The two largest populated areas at the time were Limerick City and Rathkeel. In the following decade, there was a huge decrease in population where the population fell to 262,000 people, which was a massive 20% decrease of the population. Interestingly enough, along with the massive drop in population, this meant that Rathkeel was no longer the second most populated town in Limerick, this title would be given to Newcastle West instead. Another very interesting thing to observe is that both Limerick City and Newcastle West's populations had big spikes of growth in population, despite the county as a whole losing 20% of its population. In 1861, the population had dropped to 217,000. At this stage, the county's population as a whole had dropped by about 2.5 million pe people and Limerick, like the rest of Ireland, was not exempt from this decline. This drastic change came because of the Great Irish Famine, where millions of Irish people emigrated or died, leaving the country much less populated. In the decades between 1861 and 1871, the population of Limerick dropped by a further 26,000 to 192,000 people. These mass declines in populations would not slow down in, as in, again in 1881, the population was 180,000 people. But even then the two most populated areas still remained Limerick City and Newcastle West. In 1891, the population took another huge drop down to 158,000 people. 1891 is significant as it is the point where the population of Limerick hit less than 50% of what it was 50 years earlier. At the turn of the century in 1901, the population of Limerick came in at 146,000 people. This would be one of the smaller drops in population. However, it is still a significant drop. In 1901, this number only took a small drop of 3,000 to 143,000, showing a bit more stability in the county by 1901. Evidence and examples of the 1901 and 1911 census can be seen on the National Archives website and are open for public viewing. There was a gap in the census and population calculations until the year 1926 due to the Irish War of Independence. By then, another 3,000 people had left bringing the population to 140,000. Limerick City and Newcastle West remained the two most populated areas. 1936 saw the first rise in population for nearly 100 years, when it rose to 141,000. By 1961, Limerick would witness the last decrease in population for a long time, when it dropped to 133,000 people. The population would then change and begin to rise over the coming decades, hitting 140,000 in 1971 and 161,000 in 1981. Another interesting fact note is that since 1981, Ballycommon has replaced Newcastle West as the second most populated area. In 2002, the population rose again to 175,000 people. The most recent population we have access to is 2016, where the population was 194,000 people. And Keen, traditionally, what surnames are the most common in Limerick? The most common popular surnames include O'Brien, O'Shaughnessy, 
Ryan, Fitzgerald, and O'Connor. The surname O'Brien is O'Brien in Irish, meaning descendant of Brian Baru. The name means exalted one. It is among the 10 most frequently found in Ireland and derives from the 10th century King of Ireland, Brian Baru. In 976, Baru secured control of the Dal Gash tribal grouping based on the border between Clare and Limerick, and two years later defeated and killed the Ogunacht King of Munster. He then waged deadly war in the kingdoms of Connacht, Meath, Leinster and Breffney. From the 10th century down to today, the O'Briens have been prominent in the history of Ireland. There were a number of septs in early Irish history, the largest of which were based in Clare, Limerick, Tipperary and Waterford. It is in these counties that the majority of descendants can still be found. In Griffith's valuation in the 1850s, the largest concentration of O'Brien households were found in Limerick, Clare, Tipperary and Cork. A famous O'Brien from Limerick was novelist and playwright Kate O'Brien, born in 1897. O'Shaughnessy is derived from the Gaelic clan O'Shaughnessig. The root here is the personal name Shaughnessig of uncertain origin and meaning. In Ireland, O'Shaughnessy has been more common in Limerick, with its close relative Shaughnessy more common in Galway. In Galway, the name has been... The O'Shaughnessys were believed to have been the direct descendants of the last pagan king of all Ireland, King Dahi in the 10th century. Ryan is today one of the 10 most common surnames in Ireland. It is an anglicized form of the Gaelic O'Malarine, meaning descendant of a devotee of St. Ryan. The first recorded spelling of the name, which was dated in the 14th century, is shown to be that of O'Malarine in medieval records of County Tipperary during the reign of Gerald, Earl of Desmond. The O'Malarine sept was very powerful in Oni, which forms two modern baronies on the borders of Limerick and Tipperary. Even today, the surname is highly concentrated in this area. In the 1850s Griffith's valuation, Limerick had 1,263 Ryan households. Fitzgerald is of Anglo-Norman origin, meaning the son of Gerald. The Irish Fitzgeralds are said to be descended from Morris, son of Gerald, husband of Nesta, Princess of Wales, Constable of Pembroke, and of a royal heritage in Wales. He accompanied Strongbow in Ireland during the Norman invasions and received land as a result. Over the following eight centuries, the family became one of the most powerful and numerous in Ireland. The Fitzgeralds were in counties Kerry and Kildare, but now they're also widespread in Limerick. Finally, O'Connor is also one of the most popular surnames in Ireland, with the name originating from at least six distinct Gaelic septs in different parts of the country. The Kerry O'Connors were chiefs of a large territory in North Kerry, displaced north into Limerick by the Norman invasion, where they retained much of their power down to the 17th century. Today, these O'Connors are the most numerous and can be found in every county in Ireland, with the majority being in Limerick, Cork and Kerry. And Keen, has there been any significant historical or political events that have taken place in Limerick and continue to be remem remembered in the county? Limerick has remained remembered for numerous events in both its politics and history throughout its establishment. In terms of historical and political events, Limerick is known for a few particular events during its long history. The Treaty of Limerick is an event well remembered and it's given Limerick one of its nicknames, the Treaty County. Prior to the treaty being signed, Limerick saw four sieges during between 1641 and 1691. The Irish rebellion that took place in 1641 resulted in a siege in Limerick City the following year. Nine years later, Limerick was invaded by Cromwell's army and their leader, Henry Ireton. Two more sieges took place in 1690 and 1691 before the treaty was created. On the 3rd of October 1691, the treaty was signed, ending the Willamite War, lasting three years. The Willamite War, also known as the Jacobite War, was when James II and his successor, William of Orange, were in conflict. The war was caused by King James II, a Catholic, being overthrown by his Protestant daughter, Mary, 
and her husband, William. During the three year period the war lasted, the monarchs fought over land ownership as well as religion. It only ended with the 1691 treaty. The treaty consisted of two separate agreements. The first was the military terms of surrender. This was signed by the two parties, the commanders of the French expeditionary force, as well as loyal supporters of James, known as Jacobites, signed for James II, and for William of Orange and his wife, Mary II, Baron de Ginkel, the leader of the government forces in Ireland, signed. The second agreement was the conditions for those that remained. This included retention of property in Ireland as well as guarantees of religious freedom for the Catholics. Many of these conditions set out in the second agreement were ignored as Protestant England gained control of Ireland. This Protestant ascendancy remained in Ireland and under Protestant rule until 1922 when Ireland received its independence. The Easter Rising took place in 1916. Like many other counties, Limerick played an active role in the fighting that took place in Dublin on that Easter Sunday. In particular, a man named Edward Ned Daly made an impact in the fighting. Ned Daly was a Limerick man and a commandant that led Dublin's 1st Battalion in the 1st Courts Garrison, where some of the most intensive combat took place. He fought bravely until he was forced to surrender his battalion Italian by Padraig Pierce on the 29th of April. Daly was the youngest man with his rank and was also unfortunately the youngest of those executed at Kilmainham Jail in the aftermath of the Rising. He was only 25 years old. A long after the events of the Rising, Limerick remem remembered the sacrifices made by Ned Daly and many other Limerick people and in 1956 a memorial statue was unveiled. It showcased Ned Daly, Tom Clark, and Con Colbert, where Colbert Rail Station in Limerick is named after. These were three men that participated in the Rising, alongside a figure representing Mother Ireland. This 1916 memorial was built over a previous statue of Viscount Fitzgibbon that was blown up by nationalists in 1930. Thank you so much for all your work on County Limerick Keane. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that that was a very interesting account of all things Limerick. Um, I personally found the history section really interesting and I never knew that Con Colbert was um, the person that they named Limerick Station after. So that is very interesting. Um, but I think that's where we're going to end today's show. I'd like to thank you, you. I'd like to thank our guest Keen for coming to speak about County Limerick, and I'd like to thank all of our listeners for listening to today's show. And I hope you all look forward to the coming weeks where we will be hosting a range of different shows on the Genealogy Radio Show. And this show, as always, will be repeated on Sunday on Radio Cork Abashkin. <laughs>